Pagani gave me the, the, this strong sense of community that I'm trying to build every night with all my guests, every month with all my regulars, every year in the bar that I'm running. Hello and welcome to Best Sips Worldwide. I'm your drinking companion, Susan Schwartz, an American travel writer living in London. Thanks to my mother's love of martinis, the first words I spoke were shaken, not stirred, and I've been obsessed by the history of cocktails ever since. Through the years, I've been lucky enough to sip some of the best made by the best. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let me introduce you to the movers and shakers of the world's most famous watering holes. His first sips were limoncello and his first job was in a bar. It was destiny that our guest today, Alfonso Califano, would find a home in a cocktail bar. Today on Best Sips, he shares with us why he feels he was born to do what he does. The residential Clapham Junction in London is not an area that is usually home to forward-thinking, cutting-edge mixologists and bars. But right on Battersea Rise, the Walrus Room holds its own with any of its siblings in Shoreditch, Soho, and Clerkenwell. Cocktail of the Week will be after the interview, so don't go away. We need to start in Pagani, I think. Yeah, that's what everything starts. <laughs> Pagani is where everything starts. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, you told me when we first met that you had great stories to tell. Do they start in Pagani? Yeah, they probably do. Yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they do. I think... Now, maybe yeah. for, for everyone, Pagani is this tiny, tiny little town exactly. outside of Naples. About how long? Half an hour outside? Half an hour. Between Napoli and Salerno. Okay. Just in the middle. Uh-huh. Not far from Amalfi Coast. And what happens there? What happened is a little town, really. Uh, the, actually, the most important period of the, of the year is just this one we are living now. Because the week after Easter, we are celebrating our, our Madonna, our Holy Virgin. Uh-huh. And so I'm going to fly back because I'm really linked to this period in Pagani. Uh, not for a Catholic point of view, but for a, it's very buzzy, it's very lively. Thousands and thousands of people are going to come and visit this, this party, so it's fun. A lot of drinking and eating? A lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Like all but I think sand- that's all Italian festivals. Oh yeah, all the sand is going to be roasted artichokes, tagliolini with ragu, and lots of red wine, yeah. Well, are you going to be showing them your, uh, introducing them to some of your cocktails? Uh, well, we can try, we can try. <laughs> I'm, I'm still thinking a limoncello, a good limoncello drink that is not stupid. All That's right. what I would like to do. Uh-huh. And so, is that what you started drinking when you were young in Pagani? Limoncello? Yeah, that, yeah that's probably the, the first alcoholic spirit I had, yeah. My, my grandmother and my grandfather are homemade producing limoncello since 30, 40 years. Uh-huh. And it's still the only thing that I bring back from Italy every time I fly there. It's, a liter of homemade limoncello from my grandmother. Yeah, I can bring you a bottle. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, um, in Pagani, I mean, Pagani to London is a big step. Yes, it so is. So you got to tell me yes, some of the is. steps. But I, 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 I always try to find uh, a solution for that because the I start to do this job for for a community sense for the community sense of it. So. Well, uh, when I was 12, my, my mother says during our summer holiday season are really long in Italy, and she told that I couldn't stay three months home. And so she sent me to work in uh, the local bar just outside my house. And how old? 12? 12. <laughs> I, was, I was bringing coffees around. Uh-huh. And it was not for the money, so everybody that saw me and knew me said, what are you doing? Why are you working? work is to get money but that bar became my family like it, the, the, the 50 regulars there, they are my best friends now and we solve problems together and that helped me to go through lots of things in my life after uh, I went there for all the summer season for other 5-6 years and the Antico Cafe, I will, I will mention it because it's so nice 
and it's the first thing I do when I go back and the last before taking the planes so nice and it was more like a cafeteria a typical Italian no spirits involved not a lot a part of some sambuca in the coffee uh, and yeah but I, I, at that point I was not thinking to to work in this industry mm -hmm. for so long um, then a friend asked me to to open a wine bar with him always in Pagani and I had him and there was a nice experience as well the Baba Baba, as did I said. Mm -hmm. And then I started studying at university. I look like this, but I actually have a bachelor's degree in <laughs> tourism economy. Uh, Where was that? Uh, in Naples. In Naples. In Naples. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me four years. I had uh, an Erasmus experience in Portugal. Uh, that was fun as well. And probably Portugal was 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 a period where I really get into spirits and wines and Porto wine and you know it's really what did you study in your your Erasmus experience tourism economy okay economy so of tourism okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. kind of always knew you wanted to be in some form of tourism or yes. hospitality yes uh -huh. service service, service. industry uh -huh. yes and and yeah to go back to Pagani, Pagani gave me the, the, this strong sense of community that I'm trying to build every night with all my guests, every month with all my regulars, every year in the bar that I'm running, mm -hmm. and probably first of all with the team that I'm managing, because without having a team behind you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't get what you, what you get. I'm actually, you, you getting me in a, a really, Happy period, if I can say that, because I'm I'm having I'm having a lot of fun at the water room, and I think that's the first step. Well, mm. so the first step was you go to Portugal. Yeah. And you. I start, start drinking. You start actually, drinking. my first time. Right. So that's the first. That's where we are. My first hangover. My first. <laughs> my, and how old were you? Twenty-two years old. Yeah. <clears throat> that's pretty impressive. First hangover, twenty-two. And so you came back to Bagani. Yeah. And you thought, it's time to go somewhere else? Uh, to be honest, I, 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 was, um, I went for my first interview after in, uh, university. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I thought I could speak English because in Portugal I was speaking just English. And I, 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 I've been in a college in London when I was 13, 14, studying English. So I was pretty confident. And at the interview, I just blacked out. That was in Italy. I couldn't say a word. Um, a friend was over in holiday from London, a friend from Pagani, and he said, I don't know what to do. He said, you know what, come with me. I made it. You stay to my place. You, Again, community. We, yeah. Community. Yeah. We, we, well, that's what makes us stronger in Italy, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and Come to my place, you stay, I find you interviews as a bar back, you start so you can train your English. I say, okay, but I don't like London. London is not my city. Like, no, no, no. Whoa. <laughs> it's cloudy. It's not fun. I've been there two, three times. It's not my, it's not my as they say, a cup of tea. Um, and so I say, okay, I come for three months. Yesterday was three years. <laughs> I was going to say, how many years yeah. now? <laughs> three years yesterday. Mm -hmm. and what did you find that you fell in love with and wanted to stay? I don't know, because then I, 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 I suddenly clicked and understand that this is was my path. I want to do this in my life because I think I'm good at that as well. I don't and this to... was as a bar back first? Uh, yeah, quickly moved behind the bar in a pub. Mm -hmm. That's Kilburn period. Like Kilburn. after Pagani, Kilburn is is the key uh -huh. for me. And did that become your second community? Yes, exactly. That was my second community. I stay two years and a half in Kilburn. Uh, an eclectic and histrionic. Can you say histrionic huh? in English? Yeah. An eclectic and histrionic Irish owner took me under his wing and brought me from Barbeck to GM of a lovely pub that is the Black Lion. Uh, it's a graded listed building. 
big, 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 huge pub, a classic, really classic, 15 rooms of, of B&B upstairs. And that was my dream at the moment. Like, I really wanted to be in charge of that place mm -hmm. because I wanted to show to myself that I could do it. And, and I did it. It was so... Again, I, when I build my team that are now my best friends in London, probably, when, when, when all that came to, to, to the end, it was nice. And you felt that front of house was more your yeah, your I kind of place? yeah, I kind of. So, I, I was saying this with Simone the other night, Simone de Luca. Um, I I cannot remember the recipe, I cannot, but I can remember what a thousand five hundred people drink for always and associate a drink to their face. It's just. I, I, I don't think I'm, I, I was born to make drinks, I, but I was born to, 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 to be a clown. No, uh, you were born I, to make people drink. Or, yeah, or to make people not, drink. I don't mean it that way, but, you, you know, have people enjoy what they're drinking. Yes, kind of, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like what I do. I think it's the Italian way. It's the Italian way, yeah. We, we are born to, to... I think we are born to, to be hospitable. Uh... It's because we, we went through a lot, historically, probably. We always had to, to learn how to host the new conquerors, <laughs> how to, you know, how to deal with the new situation and how to get along with that. Mm -hmm. And then, together with this, there is this big craft and homemade, and like, you Americans probably don't know what does mean make an old homemade limoncello? And not just because you have lemons, you don't have lemons, but because you always had a huge shelf in front of you, and you could pick up the the most beautiful uh, brand. And I think the pride. I think Italians have a lot of pride yes, in what they do as yes, well. Yes, we are. We are. So if they give you something, it's always a hundred percent. You know, yeah. it's very rare that you get a, a bad meal or a bad drink. Yeah, I you think know, so. you're not even allowed to drink. You know, there's so many rules. You can't even drink a cappuccino after eleven o'clock. You know, when yeah, can yeah. you start drinking alcohol in Italy? Whatever you like. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. You there told me a, a story. Which one? About your Negroni. Well, Tell yeah. The, South Italy, that for me doesn't have a big uh, tradition of drinking like every other part in the world. For us, drink is the bottle of wine, a good wine that goes with your meal, or a dinner. We, we don't take, we, yeah, lunch Lunch is, is huge, but dinner is our, probably, the family meal. Mm -hmm. Aperitivo, uh, aperitif is more something from the north, mm -hmm. I, I, of like my experience. So the first time I, I, I I, I get used to Negroni and to Aperitif and... Well, when the I, Northern style. Yeah, the Northern <laughs> style. And then I, I, I went back to Pagani and in my Antico Cafe, I asked for a Negroni at 12 p.m. They literally called my mother. I love that. So <laughs> they pick up the phone and they call my mother and say, hey, sh he, he came back after six months in London. He started to drink Negroni at 12 p.m. What's going on? Are we okay? Uh, can want, we serve it? Do you want to come here? Like, <laughs> and you were in your twenties, right? Sorry, you were in your twenties. I'm. Well, I was twenty-four. I love that. <laughs> yeah, but uh -huh. uh, you never. If I was the young guy of twelve that went there to, to you I was the be. apprentice. You will always be twelve. I will, I will be always twelve for them, uh -huh. like in that. a good way, but uh -huh. in a in a in a nice way. In a, I love yeah. that. And but now you're here and you're at the Walrus Room. Yeah. And you're making different kinds of Negronis, and it's a different kind of place. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. We actually we just came up with a saffron Negroni that is really exciting for the mm -hmm. summer menu. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say we, I always mean Simone De Luca is my partner in crime. We are more than twelve hours per day together since six months. Another now. Italian, right? Another Italian, another bearded guy. Mm -hmm. um, we were friends since day probably the first months in London because we have friend in common. Uh, and yes, he, he when when they called him to say 
you want to come at the Waters Room to, to take over the drinks project, the drinks program, mm -hmm. uh, he cleverly say, without telling me nothing, yes, I can come, but just if I can bring a person with me. And he was thinking about me. And that was a big bet because I never worked with, with cocktails. And right, because you were in the pub. I was, yeah, I had, I had a pub background, mm -hmm. uh, managerial as well. So I, I was not into merchology, like... Mixology. Yeah, yeah. mixology, merchology. I'm still learning and that's why I'm glad I'm here because you, you think you, you get the position of GM somewhere and you arrived. You, you, you're probably not. Like, you always need to start again. And I'm learning a lot from this experience, but I'm giving a lot as well because in, for the last few years, these mixologists, like, they thinking they are the king of the hospitality, you know? This, this really serious approach, this, this kind of, you don't know what I did in this glass and you will never understand. So you are so lucky that I'm giving this to you mm -hmm. that I hate. So for me, with, with my approach of bringing this tone down, that there are other people doing it. I'm not saying I'm unique, but uh, unique. But I think it really, it really balance out because it's true. Simone to come up with a drink, he can spend weeks, months, uh, lots of trials, lots of new recipe techniques. It's hard. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a craft. It's, it's, it's difficult. But then that needs to be, you cannot make the guest feel all that, all that hard work. Mm -hmm. he, he, if you go to a doctor, he's not, he's not there and arguing with you that he studied 25 years to solve your problem in 25 seconds. He's, he, you need to be approachable, you need to be easy. You just want them to like it. Yes. Too. And yeah. to drink it. Yeah. And to come back again and have, it, have another one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're that man. I am that man, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were telling me that Simone said, I'm only coming with this guy. I'm only coming with this guy. He called me and said, well, let's take this project over. Uh, we came in October. For the first month, we were just me and him, literally. No cleaners, no, no, no other stuff. It's a part of me and him. Mm -hmm. So we, we literally, we, 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 we were here at 9 a.m. till 12 a.m. Weekends till 2 a.m. It was intense, but we, for the first time with Simone, I look at him in the eyes and say, let's do this, let's do this together. And we show each other that every the other could count on the mm -hmm. I don't know it was not a perfect English mm -hmm. but we could trust and help each other yeah. a lot yeah. and and the bar suddenly start to make better and better so we have a cleaner now <laughs> seven days a week <laughs> because this is not the usual place for a high end cocktail bar really we're in Battersea yeah. and they're not that many you exactly. think of really um, Soho or exactly. um, Shoreditch, which is so trendy, Street. you yeah. know, or uh, Clarkenwell. Mm -hmm. But really, Clapham, there's, even though so many people live here and it's primarily residential, yeah. I never really think, let's go to a bar here. Exactly. So you really had to, to prove it's, to, it's, it's, to the world. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, like, no, it's difficult, but... We're getting there. Mm -hmm. There are a few little places that are, are doing really good. Uh, 366, just over Club and Junction. It's, it's, uh, it's years now that is is fighting against this concept of being far from the cool places. Mm -hmm. uh, I know of other two new openings that are coming are coming up, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Even if it's competition, they, they, they're going to help us to, to, to create... A, what they call a destination. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a dorky saying, but you know the build it and they will come concept is you have found a partner that you work really, really well with, and yes. you're making fantastic cocktails. So yeah. people are coming, exactly, and it doesn't matter where it is. Exactly, it's mm -hmm. it's. I, I don't I don't really need people from East London to come here because 
I, I have I have a good a good uh, catchment area if you want to call mm-hmm. it like that. So I want this place full every night of the week, and I, I want I'm, I want to show what we're doing because that's the that's always the goal mm-hmm. of everyone. And let's talk more about what you're doing. Okay. Because you're doing a cocktail exchange program, right? Yeah. At the moment, yes, we have this this project uh, from. From my idea, and in collaboration with Paul from Fair Spirits, lovely brand, uh, they 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 they're using a fair trade uh, along all that chain. So from the production of the materials mm-hmm. to the bottling to the shipment, and they're doing a really good job. And I, I love that brand, that that product. Uh, so yes, we we. To go back to this, we, we are not the first of doing something like that. The Hyde Bar in Bermondsey did a, a similar project a year or a few years ago. Um, it was just to, you know, sometimes you tell me I'm doing a saffron Negroni, but then, yeah, how you made that saffron, for how long you cooked, uh, in which way. You know, there are many, many specifics in the building of a drinks. And we were thinking to mix these things up between Singapore, Tokyo, New York. Uh, I'd love to know what's going on there. And I'm a social addicted. I follow social a lot. And Simone is taking the piece with me. But uh, I really wanted to know how they arrive, what, what, what they're drinking today in Tokyo, and how the bartender build the drink that they want in Tokyo. And I was really interested. But aren't these in the secrets that no one tells? It's something like that, yes, uh-huh. something like that. That's why I wanted. Uh, it was like because I'm new to this industry, I wanted to just knock on the door and say, you know, when you act stupid and say, oh, "Sorry, can I know how you do that?" <laughs> and oh, they're telling me yes. They're telling me yes. So uh, it's working. It's working. It's working. <laughs> I'm so proud that uh, this week, uh, Cufflink Club in Singapore uh, confirmed that wants to partner with us and so what will happen you will have that drink here made the way they do for a, certain for a month of time? yeah uh-huh. every month is one different drink and uh, in the same moment they're gonna have one of our drink in their bar so mm-hmm. that's cool that's a, that's also a way to to spread to spread your name around yeah, because absolutely. I'm in Battersea I, 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 I need to I need to make my name circulate Money. I think your name is circulating. I can it tell. Is? It yeah, is. Yeah, uh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope it's good. We we say uh, no matter if it's good or bad, the name needs to circulate. <laughs> <laughs> now all this talk about a saffron Negroni, I want to try one. Yeah, so we, we're gonna do why one. Why don't we go make one at the bar? Yeah, let's do. All right. It. Let's do it. Thanks to Alfonso for joining me today and making me dust off a recipe I have for latte limoncello. My cocktail of the week is really a liqueur you can make at home. I was given a recipe for latte limoncello by the owner of a house I rented in Puglia. Technically, it means milk limoncello, but it's so much tastier than it sounds. Mix 300 grams of sugar, 600 grams of semi-skim milk, which is 2% for those of you in the USA, the peel of four lemons, and 250 grams of pure alcohol. Everclear if you're in the U.S. and vodka if you're in the U.K. Put it all into a jug or sealed container and mix it up. Leave it alone for 24 hours, and one day later, you have a smooth, easy-to-drink limoncello. But be careful not to drink it all at once. It goes down really easily. Next week, May brings us Whiskey Month, starting with the Kentucky Derby and all her bourbon mint juleps, all the way to World Whiskey Day on May 20th. We bring you Chris Hoban, the brand ambassador for R&B Distillery, one of the youngest in Scotland, but already making a mark. Until next time, bottoms up. For more information and links to everything you've heard about, plus a bit more, please visit bestbitsworldwide.com. Thanks for listening to Best Sips Worldwide, a spinoff of Best Bits Worldwide. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation, and never drink and drive. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. You'll find me at the bar.